Well, we are lucky to have Levon Aronian joining us. Levon, congratulations on a fantastic first day of quarterfinals. You won it. Yeah, I got lucky today. How are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm very happy because uh, I cannot say I was playing well throughout the match. So it was, uh, it was a lucky moment for me. And I and I have to ask you. I mean, you're you you have play, been playing 15 games so far, and then such an intense day today with with four games, and and you know you have to win, you have to to get those draws, you have to win. Um, is it intense to be sitting there? Is it exhausting? Yeah, well, it is. But uh, I have a pretty good record though of winning on demand. So. Uh, I've done it in the World Cups, so I cannot say I really like it. <laughs> I mean, it's nerve wracking. It must be. Uh, it must be a nice feeling, though, to know that you are able to. You're you're capable of, co of doing these comebacks. Yes, yes. Uh, it's good to, to know that the the ability is still there to to launch a comeback uh, at some moment. Mm -hmm. All right, Levan, so you will play the second day of quarterfinals tomorrow. As we mentioned, you are one point up now. How will you attack this second day? Um, no, definitely not uh, rely on luck because today uh, I think uh, my preparation in the opening was very bad uh, with black. With white it was more or less okay, but... Uh, with black, I was just getting very bad positions. So I have to uh, work on that. All right. Well, Levon, we wish you the best of luck also for tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Hi, and we have Levon with us. We have exactly the person we need uh, to help us out with this. Firstly, congratulations, Levon. You're, you're uh, but we are not hearing you, Levon. We are not hearing you. Oh, sorry, guys. Can you hear me now? Yes, and congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lev, we're going to get back to your performance today and talk about that. But first, should we uh, go through this game? Because it's pretty exciting and a very important <laughs> moment as well. You can perhaps help us with this. So king c8. So he's trying to bring the king close. Uh, should be survivable somehow, but... Uh, you know, when you get such position against Hikaru, who's always grinding, I mean, he doesn't stop uh, looking for chances. I think it's very difficult to play. But I'm guessing A4, right? Something like uh, that. You know, this this game is, is incredible because if I show you that this was the position of move 20, or even later it, it got to this position, you would say that, come on, how did this, how could this ever happen, yeah? <laughs> and uh, and we got fooled, and we didn't really. I mean, we missed probably the the moment when things started to turn. I mean, here it looks like okay, White can never be worse, and he also has his chances. And this is how we got to this race. So knight b5, rook d5, knight c3, rook a5, and he's trying to play king c7, I guess. Well. What Maxim is also very good at, he's, he's always good at activating his pieces at the, at the time. He doesn't really defend passively, so... And the line is on the board lab with king c7. Mm -hmm. Knight e4 was not possible because of rook a8 picks up the rook. Yeah, well, this should be survivable, yeah? I mean, already he has this e-pawn running. Unless there are some... the knight on CC, it looks much better than it, it looked few moves back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because king b6 is coming, yeah? So what you should do? You're not in time to do the a3 trick. So... Bishop g6, king b6, rook e5, knight a2. I'm guessing... Yeah, with such a pawn, it should be, it should be kind of fine, yeah? Knight c3... I'm always, uh, whoops, this I forgot actually. Ah, yeah, this is dangerous. <laughs> this is suddenly I got, dangerous, yeah. <laughs> I got carried away. <laughs>
Yeah, I felt like you are remembering your game and how you how you managed to bounce back, and uh, you are in too uh, happy mood. Yeah. Uh, okay, wait a second. Bishop is on g6. Now we have to be careful here. Yeah. So e4, a3. Mm, okay. Uh, Maximum for activization. As you said, he wants to activate his pieces. King d6. Ah, King d6 is good because he stops a3. Huh. Yeah, this is, this is a classy move. Following your instructions, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, rook a6, king c5. You're going to try this stuff with bishop f7 at some point, yeah? Yeah, but, I have to, yeah. But now perhaps you have rook f8 after bishop f7? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah now the e-pawn is running. Yeah, now his uh, king d6 was a very good move. Because he's, uh, he's activating. All of his pieces are coming together, yeah? Rook a6 on the board? Yeah, I think king c5 is is, is needed, because king e7, I don't know. Maybe it's possible, but bishop f5, you don't want to put your king uh, under those checks. Yeah. Yeah, Maxim played king c5. <sighs> bishop f7 also on the board. But this is uh, this this cannot be a good move. Yeah, bishop of seven somehow. Okay, he, but he wants. To, I mean, first of all, he needs to win this game. So Hikaru is in yeah. all-in mood. But probably rook f eight and rook f four. I mean, I'm afraid of the g pawn, but I'm not afraid of the h pawn. So. Yeah, this rook f four is very nice. I mean, I don't need to calculate those e4 things anymore. I mean, no, I, I, am I in time to promote or not? Just if I need a draw, I will do that. Hikaru yeah, shaking Max, his head. taking his time. I mean, he has more than, okay, four minutes, 10 seconds. It's but that can't really allow the move g5 here, no? For example, something not rook f8, and after g5, suddenly white is back in the game? Yeah, yeah, I guess you might get uh, the vidit end game. You should be careful. <laughs> don't say that. I don't think we could handle it. But why is Maxime taking so long then? What is the alternative that he's thinking of? Well, oh, he's the he's answer. He the, went e4. He That's went e4. the answer. He's choosing the concrete immediate. Uh, probably he over just calculated everything instead of. Uh, playing with his hand, he decided to calculate it after the last move. Okay, so what happens after g5? This I, I do not know yet. Yeah, what happens if we start pushing, but I'm not, not liking, but okay, can I push? Rook e6, yeah. Ah, uh, you play rook e6 immediately, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ah, just in case. e2, g6, yeah. Okay, you still have this rook h5 kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, that's nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> but... That's appreciated. <laughs> yeah, probably he thought it over, decided that this is not risky at all. Yeah, because I was about to panic that, yeah, things are not, uh, things are out of control, but yeah, left came to the rescue, rook h5. Very nice. You know, when it comes to finding cheap uh, tricks, <laughs> you know, you can rely on me. <laughs> well, it was quite stylish. I mean, it wasn't the cheap stuff, you know, I'm used to. No, no. <laughs> and against me, they work anyway, no? I mean, it's, uh, that's it. Yeah, so Maxim shocked uh, Hikaru with VD4. Now Hikaru is down to one minute. He, he feels that, aha, uh -huh, okay, let me push my g pawn, but but this four sequence seems to work for black. Okay, probably you can get this position with the pawn on e2, rook e6, rook h5, but yeah, that's that's same, yeah? 
Yeah, always this look h5. Yeah, that's the key move. Wait a second. Ah, even yeah, yeah. I thought you know, g5 takes takes e3, g6, e2, g7. But then you even can uh, play something like I don't know. Uh, then I can even play e1 queen, no? Because yeah, I queen e2, queen a6, yeah. Yeah. So we are seeing this line. Rook e6 on the board and rook h5 blitzed out, yeah. So king f2 here, you just go rook g5 or rook f rook f5? I think both both are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, basically once you notice rook h5, you know exactly that you can never lose this game anymore. Hmm. King F2 on the board. Love in these time formats and rapid uh, play, you know, it's it's so dramatic for us to watch all the action. But when you're playing there, at what moment in the clock do things start becoming a little nervous with the clock situation? Well, you know, 10 seconds in an online game is, is a lot. I mean, it's a lot. When, it's, when it's over the board is... You're not noticing the 10 seconds, but online uh, it's much more than because you move instantaneously with the mouse, yeah? So I don't think any of us feel any pressure. So I guess uh, Grishuk would be happy just to get 10 seconds from the start and just play a <laughs> normal game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we do have a result. So Maxime Vacher Lagrab wins the first set. That game ended in a draw. Let's just quickly take a look at the scoreboard. Uh, Magnus Carlsen beat Anish Giri two and a half, one and a half. We've got Lev with us. We're going to get back to him. He won his match, his set uh, against Jan Nepomniachtchi two and a half, one and a half. Uh, Rajabov wrapped it up in three games. Maxime Vacher Lagrab things got a little tensed in the end, but through that game and with his first game win takes it back we've got a set two which means that anish in a must win situation tomorrow yan as well vasi so needs to strike back as well and hikaru nakamura it's going to be a very exciting day but for now let's hear it from our uh first set winner levon lev tell us give us your impressions from today's match um yeah i thought i had a good position then i, I in the first game then i started uh, probably over complicating things so first knight d2 doesn't look like a good move i mean you can just play rook b3 this was a move that i was planning you know and then slowly you can in, uh, play uh, a4 it's a pleasant position because i have some sort of a grip over the center and it's not that evident how black uh, should uh, fight fight in the center. Um, so, yeah, after he managed to play c5, then it was just a equal position. So, I, I kind of forgot that he can just uh, ignore the b6 uh, on uh, in the position and everything will be... Yeah, it, looked, it felt like Jan got his Grunfeld position with c5, yeah? And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Then, uh, yeah, we also had this feeling that you were kind of pressing out of the opening, and then we were surprised that uh, you couldn't really utilize anything. And then, what happened in the second game? Because it was some very big tactical uh, skirmish at the at the beginning, at the middle. Yeah. This is this is a line I prepared for uh, for a blitz, and then somehow deep inside, I had this feeling that what he played was very logical, as I remembered. I had this feeling that I have to play uh, queen h4. So this bishop b6 is what I analyzed. Uh, this is what I analyzed. d4, f4, knight e4. Then I, I had this, like a memory or something, that queen h4 is the move. And then I thought, uh, no, it cannot be the move. Uh, I mean, he can always, uh, you know, do some queen g4 stuff. I don't know, for some reason, um, you know, you do remember the line, but you don't remember the assessment. And then I went back and checked that the assessment that like is slightly worse needs to needs to try to make a draw. But I was uh, during the game, I was up on time, and I thought, okay, some things will work out for me. So 
but clearly they didn't. And for this ed4 takes takes bishop f4. I mean, what was your feeling that you are worse here? Or well, I was mainly uh, relying on knight d3, but instead of knight d3, I also had knight g6 written in alliance, which is uh, this is probably not so bad for black. You know, bishop b3, queen d7. When it comes to f5, uh, it looks very solid. The knight always being able to jump. So. Yeah, so yeah, 93. I think I think here I started playing uh too quickly. This was the main reason of the loss. Somehow I I looked at the 91 takes takes and then uh I stopped to think and I was like what am I doing? <laughs> Everything yeah, is winning we, for a while. We had this position with Harry and we actually felt like okay, 91 kind of loses, so you are definitely going to play rook takes f4 and we were debating that after queen f8, how should white uh, stabilize because you are coming with rook e8? Yeah, this I should have, of course, cho chosen to play like this. I mean, it was uh, rather... Uh, I think this whole game I was playing a bit too emotional. Because I played this new idea and I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to surprise my opponent. Then he's down on time, I was already thinking I'm going to play for a win. <laughs> you know how optimistic I am, Peter. Yeah, I know, yeah. But I, you know, I had this feeling, you mentioned that uh, you were so happy and uh, so optimistic. I do recall that with something like this, you beat Matlakov in the World Cup, no? Yeah, 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 it's uh, similar, but with Bishop on D6. Uh -huh. Which is... Uh, I, I, generally, it's good to find some uh, opening ideas which involve your piece uh, on a different square in order to confuse your opponent. So you cannot use the same recipe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this was basically a good, good game by Jan, I suppose. Did and at some point I almost survived. I mean, if I didn't uh, stupidly give a check on G2, it was crazy. I mean, I completely forgot that uh, it's actually, uh, I don't know what went wrong with me. Yeah, I should, of course, uh, take uh, king f6. And, okay, I know it's losing, but, uh, you know, some rook c2 business start. I mean, there are always these checks, you know, at some point. So it's not that easy to win this position, for sure. Yeah, I mean, first, when we saw that uh, Jan went for this force variation, we also had this feeling that, aha, uh -huh, maybe he lost control of it, but... Finally, then we convinced ourselves that, okay, you guys know what you guys are doing and uh, we, we believed you. Yeah, yeah. So, and then how did you feel? Okay, this was a very painful loss. Uh, you are behind on the score and you are kind of in a must-win situation with the white pieces. Uh, what, what was your strategy? How did you manage to, to come back? Well, because I thought I got a good position in the first game, I should continue with the, the same opening. And uh, and generally, of course, it's uh, it's not a very serious opening. But I managed to win a tie break against Maxim Vashilagrav in this opening in the World Cup, a crucial game. Uh, so the the, the Armageddon. So I have some good memories about this opening. So sometimes it's the emotions connected to the opening are more important than the practical value of the opening, I think. And actually, when did you feel that you really get a chance? I mean, because it felt like you are pressing, you are slightly better, you are squeezing, but when was this moment when you felt like, aha, yeah, I'm really gonna do it? Okay, it looks like nothing here. I know it's nothing, but I was up on time, so I thought, okay, knight d6 is a good move. Takes, takes, and I will, you know, it's a strategical position. I, I might, I might get something. And then, uh, yeah, and then I got something. Uh, of course, there are many ways to draw. And up to a point when I blundered perpetual, uh, I think things were going fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and where did you blunder it? Well, my h5 move, yeah? Was terrible. So, okay, this... 
everything happened. Yeah, this is some kind of uh, natural things are happening and and then I went h5 and then rook f2 check. I just realized. And bishop d4 and uh, queen e2. I mean, with the pawn h4, this thing doesn't work. With the pawn h5, it's a draw. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. Wow, so Jan, Jan had it in his hands, yeah, to survive here. Yeah, yeah. But also after knight g4, I thought I don't really have a threat after knight g4. Uh, move number 43, yeah, uh, I thought king g7 is, king g7, I was planning to play queen f5, but then uh, I thought queen c5, I thought this is the easiest. Yeah, because e5 you have checked, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it looked to us that uh, like this knight g4 came as a, such a shock for, for Jan that he simply collapsed here, yeah? I think he blundered uh, queen a6 mate. I have this feeling. I, I think he saw all up to point of queen f4 check. And then uh, he thought, okay, queen f4 doesn't work, the rook f5. And that's what he blundered. I have this feeling. Mm -hmm. Which is possible, actually, because you kind of look at the queen d6 ideas and... Yeah, you also look at uh, some other things which don't work. Yeah. So I got extremely lucky here, of course. And then the end game, of course, it's uh, won with zillion ways, but I was just trying, you know, to... Uh, how, do they, how do they say it in poker? You know, not to force things, just to, just to stay. And yeah, suddenly I managed to lure his bishop to h2, where he gets lost. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, this is how you win these positions, no? I mean, you just, you just <laughs> improve, you improve, and then your opponent will collapse and make your life easier, yeah? Yeah, because uh, this position is also one with the pawn on g5, right? You have this uh, win if you don't let the bishop somewhere. I mean, I don't remember anymore, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to think about it during the game. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, here you equalized, and then you had this incredible, crazy last <laughs> game because th things seem to have gone completely out of your hands at the beginning. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing. I mean, why did I play rookie eight and then bishop e six? This was so strange. I was trying to invent something, so my preparation was really bad. And then I remember that Ganguly plays before a4 just without a reason to, to do it even. I mean, he's happy to do it at any moment. So I was really unhappy. But, and then knight h5 is more of a... I spent so much time thinking, what am I supposed to do? And I thought, okay, if I don't go for it now... You know, I'm so this, this was the moment, and I will hand it over to Tanya because she should also ask questions. That Tanya at this moment asks us, with Harry, that please tell me why Levon has only four minutes in this position, and we we were kind of speculating. Yeah, what can we say? So Tanya, it's your turn, please. Uh, Peter, I'm listening to the analysis, and yes, the first thing, of course, here was that Lev, you burned a lot of time at this moment. So what was uh, what was going on then? Okay, you normally get this position with bishop on a7. So I was trying to figure out uh, why is uh, having bishop on b6 is beneficial for me. And it's definitely not. I mean, there is no one instance where bishop is better placed than b6. It gets under a hit. And, well, I was thinking more or less contemplating, uh, wishing I was on the side of my opponent, all those things. And uh, yeah, here I saw knight f4, but I was just not sure what's going on. So I just thought, let's uh, take de, and after, after de, maybe do some bishop d4, sorry move, you know, uh, instead of knight d4 if it was to play. Yeah, just some uh, something very sad. 
maybe you know I'll get some knight f4 at some point. Okay, some d3, but knight e4 is of course very strong. And uh, okay, c6, c6 is mainly a move that I'm begging him to take knight e5. Because if he doesn't take knight e5, I'm probably completely busted. With knight e5, at least I get something in. And knight e5 looks so obvious. So here I was uh, more or less uh, busted uh, with any kind of move. I we guess. were looking at ba6 and then rook a6 and bishop e5. Uh, were you worried about this during the game? I wasn't worried anymore. I knew that I'm losing and I was very relaxed at that point. I was I worried know. before when, when I got this position and then I just relaxed. So three minutes on the clock, a difficult position and you were not worried at all. <laughs> No, oh, I mean, you worry when uh, you at least have some hope. And yeah. then at what point did that change? At what point did you start getting hopeful about your position? Uh, yeah, before knight f4, when he played knight f3, actually. I thought there has to be many good moves here for white. I think I saw some moves, but I don't remember exactly. But yeah, after knight f3, knight h4, suddenly there is some life. So he took, he took uh, knight g3, rook e8, and then I've got a marshal. <laughs> I mean, Peter knows how I feel about this stuff. We share a common, common passion about being down upon and trying to beg for a draw. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say yeah, a but kind of here, here I have foreseen it. You know, I was saying that I'm very worried for Jan because I know how you how dangerous you are in all these martial structures, and then exactly that happened in the game. So, yeah, it's uh, you you showed how dangerous you are here. Yeah. So he took he played bishop c3, uh, h5. Yeah, I thought he's going to play rook f1, bishop takes d4, and then it's uh, oh, this should be a draw. Uh, no, I, I was planning to take bishop d4 immediately. Ah, if he goes rook a1, then I can take bishop d4 immediately. Because uh, one more beautiful chip, or rook e6, knight h3, yeah? Wow. Mm -hmm. And then uh, queen g3 stuff. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And rook f1, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a draw. And he went rook b1. I started getting hopeful. Okay, rook b7, uh, I thought he was going to play, because it's not easy what to do here. Because knight h3, did, bishop did g3. Did he have a defense? I mean, after rook b7, knight h3, we saw that it's over, no? Well, I thought he needs to take and play queen g2. I thought this is like a must. And I saw this uh, rook g6. I was pro... Okay, I saw queen c3 as well. But rook g6 is, is a move that you really want to play, you know, just to make sure you're out of any danger. And queen g3, uh, rook g3, I thought the king h1 or king g, g1, I don't know, yeah, takes, and he cannot, ah, yeah, he can do it. Then rook f1, then I take on c4, yeah? Yeah, then it's probably lost. Yeah. No, I thought uh, that I'm definitely out of danger and uh, I'm going to slowly convert. And then he went this d5, which is, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those cheapos that I like myself, rook g6, uh, queen g6. But uh, since I had 20 seconds, it's good enough. Just to show for the audience, yeah, and all of a sudden white wins, but yeah, queen h3, fg3, rookie to seal the game for you. Lev, you mentioned that, uh, you know, for you sometimes the opening emotional value is uh, more important than the objectivity of how good it is. 
how does it work do you generally decide the openings beforehand or is it in between preparation that makes you decide your approach or the opening for the upcoming game uh the decision pro i mean the decision process is pretty easy i uh prepare before the game then i forget what i prepared and then i play some random moves so <laughs> i mean <laughs> Like the most of the elite, we have this uh, pattern that we we cannot remember one single single idea that we have analyzed before the game. <clears throat> you know, you're bursting a big bubble here right now because I'm, all- I'm sure I'm sure that P- Peter will will also agree. Yeah, but let let me explain how it is. Simply, the top guys know so much, and they have to have so many things in mind that it's very easy that. Finally, exactly what comes at the board, it's uh, what you haven't checked or you forgot to check or if you checked but you forgotten exactly. I mean, those things can happen to everyone. Right. And Lev, in between games, there's such little time and and it's quite a, at least for all of us and all, all the fans here, it feels like a very stressful situation. What What happens in between games? Are you generally getting ready for the next one or checking where things have gone wrong in the previous one? What's... What's the in-between moment like? Well, uh, the best thing to do is, of course, to try to check. Uh, I mean, that's the reasonable thing any uh, wise person would do, just to check uh, what he's going to play in the next game. But uh, that was not the case. I guess you can see in, in this part, this particular game is a clear example of not really doing that. Uh, I was actually looking at the games of the, the other players. Because uh-huh. it... Uh, well, it's exciting. I'm I'm not just a player. I'm also a chess fan. I like to see what's going on in the other games. And you also often check on the player camera and see your opponent's reactions. Do you keep an eye out on that or is it just focus on the game itself? I used to do this in previous tournaments. But then I was kind of, okay, uh, this is online chess. I cannot continue just looking at my opponent's face and uh, <laughs> and just ignoring what's happening over the board. So I thought uh, I'll ignore it generally because uh, it just takes too much time, takes attention from the game. Now tell me one more thing. Now the first two days of the qualifiers were a little tough for you and did not go according to plan. But on the third day, it was an absolutely spectacular run. You had three wins, two draws, and now you won your first uh, set in the quarterfinals. Feels like there was a switch that happened. Uh, what happened? I think yesterday I played very well. Today I didn't play very well, but I uh, I kept some composure. At least I, uh, I understood that I'm losing, but uh, I didn't give up. And yesterday... Uh, for example, the, the game that I played against uh, Karakin, I'm very proud of. Did you see, Peter, my knight d5 with idea knight d4, knight c3 check? No, unfortunately, I've only seen at the very end when you were already completely winning. No, no, it was a beautiful moment. To see it in rapid made me very happy. Because I, at some point, I'm getting under attack. And then uh, it's one of these moments where you should ask yourself, what would Peter Leko do? You're, you're getting mated. Now it's time to find some miracle and to exchange some pieces somehow. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, I managed to find. So yeah, yesterday I was playing better than today. Uh, but of course, you also have to get very lucky. I mean, at some point, uh, it's not really when you're playing against players of elite. It's not really in your hands that you can safely say that you're going to win three games and qualify. Uh, you you have to uh, have some help from your opponents. So it was uh, better for me yesterday that way. Today also I got some help, but uh, today I can s- clearly say that my play was much worse than yesterday. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I will uh, be inspired by uh, the usual luck that I received. So I uh, will play better. 
Thank you, Lev. We wish you all the best for tomorrow and hope that happens as well. A lot of us are rooting for Team Ponchik, as we call it in our commentary. Thank you for joining us. Peter, do you have any final questions for Lev? Well, okay, just if you already mentioned Ponchik, uh, one question to Levon. How do you keep Ponchik under control during your games? Uh, he's uncontrollable, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> he used to bark back in the day, you know? But now he's, you know, he, he's grown up. And, uh, but he's, uh, he's inspiring me. I'm watching the nature and I'm... Uh, understanding that my purpose is to play well in order to give him treats. So, you know, it's a uh, motivation for me. Yeah, very nice. Okay, Levon, thank you very much and uh, good luck for tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Pleasure to talk to you.